a bunch of new trailers dropped, and I'll give you my opinions on the whole YouTube controversy. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Super Dario World! It's a me, Dario! Woohoo! Yesterday was extremely, extremely busy for me, man. Uh, the Beer Expo is going down this weekend in Tijuana, and a couple of friends of mine, they have their own stand there because they have their own brewery, and I'm going to be help. and I'm, I was helping them out. So after work, I did that, and then the show had its big uh, Game of Thrones event at San Diego Battle Axe, which is a lot of fun, by the way. The event was a lot of fun, and it uh, turns out that throwing sharp things at wood <laughs> is a lot of fun. Throwing axes, you can have a blast over there. I highly recommend it. And the game was close. It was really close. We everybody and their mother wanted Emily to take Thor down. Everybody. It was, oh, it was a lot of fun. There's there's video of it up on our website. There's a bunch of pictures. And uh, spoiler alert, Thor won. So that sucked. But still, he got booed out of out of the building. <laughs> Emily did great. It, it, it's sad. It's sad. Honestly, it's not. It's not really that Emily didn't win. It was that Thor won. That it's just it upset everybody. Everybody. But the event was fun. Afterwards, I had a few beers with some friends over there. So I'm tired. I'm tired. And and now I got to go to the beer expo. You know, it's going down this weekend. So I'm excited for that. But before I get into this whole controversy thing, let me just give you a quick reminder. And I'm do the, I'm going to do these quicker and quicker. So Super Diary World is now officially a part of the show's podcast network, which means you can find it in the iHeartRadio app. Just type in Super Diary World. Or you can still find it in SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. Just type in Super Diary World Podcast. You'll find it right there. Super easy. If you need to comment, if you need to contact me, any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can always reach out at Dario the Show on Instagram. This this episode today actually comes from a lot of people asking my opinion on Instagram. Like, hey, dude, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Because you're kind of related. And so, all right, let's get into it. But first, let's get some of the fun stuff out of the way because there was a lot of fun stuff that happened for the last few days. The new trailer for Jessica Jones dropped, and finally, we know what the hell it's going to be about. We know who the villain is, Gregory Salinger, who is basically, uh, well, a.k.a. Fool Killer, or he eventually becomes Fool Killer. <laughs> He's actually part of the Mercs for Money, that which is the Deadpool group. He's a mercenary, basically, but a really smart one. Uh, I think they're going to drastically change their character, obviously, but... Um, I don't know. It, it, it seems interesting, at least that they painted it, that this season is going to be, once again, brains against brawn. Jessica Jones being the brawn here. She's all, all muscle, no brains. Well, I mean, she is brains. It's, the problem is that she's drunk and she doesn't use them. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's exciting. You can also see that there's tension between her and Hellcat. There's also tension between her and Trinity. By the way, that's that's not the character's name. It's I'm just it's the character played by Carrie Ann Moss who plays Trinity in The Matrix. So I I never remember her character's name. I've just got to keep calling her Trinity. So there's there's a lot of tension going on, and supposedly they know that this is the last season, so they're gonna want to wrap it up completely. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I've I mentioned this before. I really liked the first season. Uh, because of the villain, they had a great villain. I say season two was disappointing, but let's see what they do. I mean, it's coming out in a couple of weeks. What is it, June fourteenth? So it's yeah, it it's coming out in nothing next week. So we'll see what they do with it. the The new Shaft trailer also came down, which looks hysterical. I, I I'll be honest, I've never seen Shaft. It's, it was never in my wheelhouse, but this trailer looks looks really funny. So I'm looking forward to that. We also have a trailer for Ad Astra, which is the new Brad Pitt movie with Liv Tyler and Tommy Lee Jones. And that this is the, the summary of the film. Astronaut Roy McBride travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his missing father and unravel a mystery that threatens the survival of our planet. His journey will uncover secrets that challenge the nature of human existence and our place in the cosmos. So the trailer looks super interesting. I love space movies. I love sci-fi movies, especially the ones that look like they're kind of keeping their feet underground. The movie comes out in September, and it's directed by James Gray, who has had a few successful titles. I mean, I like The Lost City of Z. I also liked We Own the Night with Joaquin Phoenix and, and Mark Wahlberg. So the dude is a good director, and so the plot seems interesting, and so I'm excited. I like space stuff. So we'll see how it goes. And those were, those were some of the big trailers that came out. This week, and I wanted to mention, so I, I went through those really quickly because the big controversy, the big thing that's the big hubbub, the thing that's got everybody going crazy in <laughs> the internet world is the whole YouTube 
possible adpocalypse thing. The Vox Adpocalypse list. Oh, I'm sorry. The Vox Adpocalypse. That's what it's being called. And so I had a few listeners reach out and ask me, like, dude, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And so I started researching it. I knew kind of a little bit of it. And um, I'm guessing the reason why they're asking is because this affects YouTube creators. And I am technically a YouTube creator because this podcast is loaded onto YouTube as well. So I guess I am considered a YouTube creator, technically, even though I don't really edit. I only do audio. I mean, I edit audio, but I don't really do video stuff. But okay. So I guess my opinion matters and I have to pick a side. I don't know. So here's what happened. So there was a reporter from Vox. And for those of you who don't know, Vox.com is a news and opinion website. Okay. And uh, apparently NBC made a big investment in them back in the day. They own a whole bunch. They're owned by Vox Media, who then owns a whole bunch of other companies. So Vox Media owns SB Nation, The Verge, Polygon, Curved, uh, Eater, Racked, Vox, and Recode. And I guess... NBC made a big investment on these guys. They they invested like two hundred million dollars on this website, so or or on Box Media. So they're not small time. They're big deal. They, I mean, you got two hundred million dollar investment by somebody, you are a big deal. Okay, you got a million dollar investment by somebody, you're a big deal. You're not a chump. And if you follow them on social media, if you see their following on Twitter and all that stuff, I'm not a big Twitter guy. I've never been a big Twitter guy. I don't get it. I don't understand how people can express themselves and just such... No, it, it's not enough. I, I need more characters. I need... I don't know. I, don't, I also don't like that people just snipe at each other on Twitter. It's a lot of fun to watch, but I don't like being a part of it. Anyway, that Twitter has nothing to do with this. This is all YouTube. So, there was a reporter from Box.com. His name is Carlos Massa. He is both Latino and homosexual. And <laughs> this is relevant because he has been... he mentioned well not mentioned he made a, a very a, a pretty loud stink about another a comedian making fun of him for being latino and gay so the issue here is that the vox reporter kept calling oh, the, the comedian by the way is steven crowder for those of you who don't know steven crowder he's a well he calls himself a late night tv host but he's not on tv he's on youtube he's got a big following the his channel's huge he has like almost four million followers on youtube and so he's it's imagine a, a late night show but on YouTube and it's very successful. He's uh he's his comedy is very let's say immature. Immature is a good word for it because it's it's mean. It's it's intended to be mean and disrespectful, but you can tell that it's a joke. It's a comedian. It's a comedy show. Late night show is a comedy show. So what Carlos Massa is saying that is that Steven Crowder has been harassing him for years now at the time and he he did a compilation video of Steven Crowder making fun of him. Now, I'm not the type of person that wants to have an opinion on stuff like this cuz this is serious stuff. Okay, this, and I'll and I'll get into why it's serious. And so I'll, I'll about things like this without going through all the details. And so he made a compilation video and in this compilation video you see Crowder making fun of him for his sexuality, for the he has the lisp and calls him queer and makes fun of him for being like so he makes he's basically making fun of him for for the basic things the things that you see on the surface right and uh also important to mention that Carlos Massa's handle is at gay wonk so that's his twitter handle so he's not in the closet he's very openly gay and so so he complained to YouTube and wanted YouTube to ban Steven Crowder now here's where we get into the dicey territory because censorship is a big deal. It's a really big deal. It's something that I am completely against for various reasons. One, because... It, one, I, I don't like it when it comes... But okay, I, I think I need to finish this story first. So that's what happened. Uh, Carlos Massa complained to YouTube and YouTube put out a statement. And the statement that YouTube said was this. Our team spent the last few days conducting an in-depth review of the video's flag to us. And while we found language that was clearly hurtful, the videos as posted don't violate our policies. As an open platform, it's crucial for us to allow everyone from creators to journalists to late night TV hosts to express their opinion within the scope of our policies. Opinions may be deeply offensive, but if they don't violate our policies, they'll remain on our site. They also added that even if a video remains on our site, this does not mean we endorse, support that viewpoint. There are other aspects of the channel that we're still evaluating. 
We'll be in touch with any further updates. Now, when the, when YouTube released that statement, Masa obviously didn't like it, and so you and complained. And YouTube had to put out another statement, and this one's a little bit longer, but it's really interesting because it states their policies. I talked about Crowder did not break their policies. Well, this is what the policy is. Okay, as an open platform. We sometimes host opinions and views that many, ourselves included, may find offensive. These could include edgy stand-up comedy routines, a chart-topping song, or a charged political rant, and more. Short moments of these videos spliced together paint a troubling picture, but individually they don't always cross the line. There are two key policies at play here, harassment and hate speech. For harassment, we look at whether the purpose of the video is to incite harassment, threaten, or humiliate an individual or whether personal information is revealed. We consider the entire video. For example, is it a two-minute video dedicated to going after an individual, a 30-minute video of political speech where different individuals are called out for, ha- for a handful of things? Is it focused on a public or private figure? For hate speech, we look at whether the primary purpose of the video is to incite hatred towards or promote supremacism over a protected group, or whether it seeks to incite violence. To be clear, Using racial, homophobic, or sexist epithets on their own would not necessarily violate either of these policies. For example, as noted above, lewd or offensive language is often used in songs and comedic routines. It's when the primary purpose of the video is hate or harassment, and when videos violate these policies, we remove them. Now, here's where things get interesting. Afterwards, YouTube demonetize Crowder. And I'll get into what demonetize. Well, basically it means that they will run ads there, but you won't get money from the ads run on your channel. And so most people who have YouTube channels and have a following, they make money through their ads. That's how they make money. They're, that's how they keep their shows alive. That's how some of them pay for everything in their lives. So you put up a video on YouTube and be at the ads, you get a cut of it, and that's how you make money. So YouTube takes a cut from it and you take a cut from it. That's how that works. So After stating that Crowder did not break any of their policies and explaining what the policies are. Now, whether or not you agree that it was harassment or not, I don't think it was because I went went into the videos. And honestly, I don't really care if it's harassment or not. People are allowed to, to make jokes of people. You're allowed to make fun of people. And from what I saw, they specifically say if you cut parts of different videos and put them together, yeah, it looks like it's a video of of somebody just attacking you. But if you see them in their entirety... If it's a 10-minute video and only 30 seconds of them are insulting you, well, it, people are allowed to insult you, especially comedians. It's kind of their thing. I can't tell you how many stand-up routines I've seen this year against Trump, and nobody is complaining about harassment against Trump, except maybe Trump and Fox. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. That, it, that's not the point here. So what is happening is that YouTube said, this guy did not break any of our policies, and then said, but we're going to demonetize him. So that's kind of a conundrum, but here's their logic, and I'm going to quote again. We saw the widespread harm to the YouTube community resulting from the ongoing pattern of egregious behavior, took a deeper look, and made the decision to suspend monetization. All relevant issues with the channel must be addressed, including any videos that violate our policies, as well as things like offensive merchandise. Now, the offensive merchandise thing is kind of interesting. But I'll get to that in a sec. The thing that's really uh, mind-boggling here is that we saw widespread harm to the YouTube community resulting from the ongoing pattern of egregious behavior. Now, those words really don't mean anything. It basically means we don't like them. And that's it. And I, honestly, I don't care if you like them or you don't. It, honestly, it's irrelevant right here. Um, the way to be objective here is eliminate both parties and just look at what the policy is or what they're trying to do. And they're trying to eliminate somebody because they don't like them. That's what that statement means. Because we saw the widespread harm to the YouTube community. The YouTube community, he has almost 4 million followers. That's a pretty big chunk of the community, right? And so how is he harming the community directly? Ah, well, that's where the argument comes in. Because Masa was stating that people were harassing him online. They were making fun of him for his sexuality. They were making fun of him for a bunch of stuff. They were claiming, uh, he claimed that he got doxxed at one point. Doxing means that your personal information was given out online, stuff like that. Now, if you're going to be a public figure, which he is, you kind of have to have a thick skin. And you kind of have to deal with people making fun of you. I work at a radio station. I can't tell you how many calls a day 
I get from people saying, like, ah, oh, Thor's an idiot. Thor's a piece of shit. Sky's a stupid cunt. We should burn her alive. Stuff like that. They, people can be really horrible online, and <laughs> on the phone, and even worse online. So, it, but if you're a public figure, you kind of just deal with it. Like, I had a guy who literally every day just called me to make, to tell me that I should leave because I'm a fucking Mexican. I'm a, what is it? I'm a fucking illegal and I should be fucking killed and blah, blah, blah. So the, people are horrible online. And uh, there's a thing called phone cojones. They're horrible on the phone. And online, they're even worse. They're, they're like mega cojones on, <laughs> online. It's, people can be really disgusting, which again is one of the reasons why I'm, I don't really care for Twitter. But anyway, if you're going to be a public figure, you kind of have to deal with it. You have to deal with criticism. Now, from what I saw, and I went deep. I saw the videos that they claimed were going to be flagged. I saw the responses on both sides. Now, once uh, the videos, yeah, uh, do they make fun of him? Yes. Do they make fun of him for being a queer, for having a lisp, for having, uh, what is it, the lispy queer? That's that's one of the things that he called them. Uh, uh, the gay Latino writer from Vox. They, they make fun of him for a lot of reasons. But the video is not intended to attack him. It's usually mostly responses for something. So let's say he, he makes a video of defending Antifa. And so Steven Crowder made a video saying why he's an idiot for saying that Antifa is not that bad. And basically it's a video breaking down his idea. And while he's breaking down his idea, he makes fun of him. Which if any of you have listened to any of my other podcasts, I do a lot. I make fun of a lot of things and I attack people as well because... If you have an idiot idea, I'm going to call you an idiot. All right? You have, you have a bad idea. Well, I, the things that I've said about D&D here, <laughs> the producers of Game of Thrones, are not very nice things. But I don't think it's harassment. I'm not actively attacking them. And I'll give you praise if you do a good thing. Problem is that if you do something stupid, I will. I, I get to make fun of you. And if, you know what? Even if you don't make something stupid, we have the right to make fun of you. All right? That's what comedy is. Uh, and go back to... But you know, it doesn't even matter because I, I I did a another podcast earlier in in the year about how censorship is going and how I even praised Jimmy Kimmel for going against the PC crowd and all that stuff. I hate all that stuff. I hate when people attack comedy, and and the reason why I hate when people attack comedy, and honestly, I I got this idea from a comedian. This is not a Dari original, but it, it makes a lot of sense. the The reason why people want to censor comics is because comedy, there's a lot of power in comedy. Okay. You can express ideas in a different light that make people start thinking, huh, maybe that is stupid. Now, now they look at it in this context, maybe that is ridiculous. Why do I believe this? Why not? So it has power. Nobody would care about comedy or, or, or about censoring it if it didn't have a certain amount of power. And it does. And it's important because you need... Sometimes you need to think outside the box and comics think really outside the box. It's important perspective. So... Back to this story particularly, and again, try to look at this as unbiasedly as possible and as objectively as possible. YouTube had a set of policies. The policies were stated by them, not broken, and yet you're going to punish one of the parties because somebody else complained. That is called a heckler's veto. That is called negotiating with the terrorist. You succumb to the terrorist, you let them win. I know that the squeaky wheel gets the grease, but fuck the squeaky wheel sometimes. They're little bitches. And you did nothing wrong. So after that, I, I kept looking, and honestly, the way that they're attacking Crowder is way worse. <laughs> it's really, really disgusting. Oh, if, what, if the things that one side did was really, really bad and really, really disgusting, the response from the other one is equal or worse. The difference is, and I looked into this a lot, Steven Crowder makes most of his money not through YouTube because apparently they've been demonetizing for demonetizing him for a really long time, which is basically a death sentence. If you're a YouTube creator and they're demonetizing you, it's a death sentence to, to your channel. And if somebody who is supported by a two hundred million dollar media conglomerate is saying eliminate that guy, I don't like him. That's real. That's kind of called fascism. Yeah, you know. I know that people throw around the word fascism a lot, but basically one of the key components of fascism is the forceful suppression of opposition. Okay? Forceful suppression of opposition. And so, if I work for a $200 million media conglomerate 
And I am demanding from YouTube to suppress my opposite, my competition, who, by the way, and this is this was shocking. Steven Crowder does not make most of his money via YouTube. He makes it via his website because apparently he has a thing called Mug Club because since he's been demonetized a lot, he started a thing called Mug Club. So basically he sells mugs and merchandise in his website and it's a club. So you you can it's like a private channel. Imagine like a, a tiny HBO where if you pay you get unlimited access to all his stuff. So not just the YouTube stuff, you get unlimited access to all of his stuff in there on the website. And uh, that's how that's how he pays for stuff. So instead of having to get ad revenue from YouTube, he has his own thing, and that's how he how he pays for everything. And <laughs> that's he kind of uses that to keep harassing YouTube. It's like, all right, well, you're not eliminating me. For, I'm still going to be here annoying you. So that honestly, I find that hysterical. I love it when people just try to stick it to other people. It's like you try to get rid of me here. Well, I found a way to come back and annoy you more. So okay, so I find that funny. And so the dude has basically funds his show via the sale of mugs. And you have a $200 million media conglomerate. That is not a fair fight. It is not. It is not a fair fight. And you're trying to suppress the other side just because you're left-leaning and he's right-leaning? That's gross. That's really disgusting. And so, again, take away... Let's take away who the parties are. Let's take away left. Let's take away right. Let's just take away everything. Let's take away investment. Let's take away money. It's one person trying to tell YouTube, shut that other person up because he was mean to me. And YouTube was like, okay, well, we have these policies and he didn't break any of them. So there's honestly nothing we can do. Like, no, shut him up. He was mean. He was mean to me. I don't like him. Nah. And then they're like, all right, fine. Well, well, well we can't. We can't eliminate him because he didn't break any of the rules. But since we don't like him either, well, we're going to take away all his money. Which would be in any other channel who doesn't do who doesn't have their own mug club thing, it's a death sentence. So all the people who work there, him, they're going to lose their jobs. They're going to lose their money. They're going to lose everything just because one person complained. I hate when one person ruins it for the rest of us. And now here's here's why this matters. Because right now, you can be like, I don't give a fuck about Crowder. I don't give a fuck about Masa, which I guess most of us are. Because a lot of these names I hadn't heard before. Okay? I hadn't. But here's the kicker. This is now going to affect YouTube's policy, and it's spreading like fucking wildfire. A whole bunch of other YouTube creators are getting demonetized. A whole bunch of YouTube creators are getting all their stuff taken down. or And even stuff that had been approved days before for advertising. So they're not only are they implementing it now, they're going back and punishing you for things you when you when you did it at the time it was okay, but now since it's bad they're punishing you. That doesn't exist in the court of law, okay? <laughs> if if today I do let's say right now it's not illegal to drive a car. And if tomorrow they decided, you know what, it's illegal to drive cars, so you're all arrested because you drove cars before. Like, but it was legal when we did it. Doesn't matter. You're fucked. You you're going to jail. You you'd be pissed, right? And so, YouTube creators are all pissed right now. Well, it, it's kind of a it's an even split, but I'm more on the side of you can't just fucking do this if we didn't do anything wrong. We followed your rules. You can't just change the rules on us. I mean, you can. YouTube is technically it's a private company. They can do whatever they want, but these are the guys that made you. Okay. All the channels, all the creators. I'm new to YouTube. I don't really care. And I'm not, honestly, I'm not beholden to YouTube. I, I'm not even monetizing YouTube. I don't really care. I, I do most of my stuff through iHeartMedia. I don't the iHeartMedia, uh, iHeartRadio app. That's who I care about. YouTube is just kind of like, okay, well, it's there. Might as well have it because of reasons. Anyway, so they created them. These guys, I mean, uh, let's stick with Crowder. Crowder, 4 million followers. Those people are on YouTube, which means that every single time they go there, YouTube is making money. Crowder has been making them a buttload of money. And now YouTube is deciding, no, we're demonetizing you. But we're not eliminating you. So it's like, we'll keep making money out of your stuff. But you can't make money out of your own work. That's fucking disgusting. It, that's, not, that's wrong. That's, that's an incredible form of abuse. Because you're getting work for free. Like, imagine you work... Or even better yet, you volunteer. Imagine you volunteer at a restaurant, right? And the restaurant is like, okay, well, we're not going to pay you, 
But if you get any tips, you can get you you can keep all your tips. So we're not going to pay you. You can come here and work, and we'll we'll, we'll just we we'll, you can keep all the tips. Right? That sounds fair. Okay. Right? And then all of a sudden they say, well, no, you kind of you can still come here and work. You can, but you can't keep any of the tips. You can still collect tips, but we're keeping them. Like what? What do you mean? Like no, yeah, you, all the money comes to us. You can still come. You can still you're you're invited to come if you want. And we don't want all of your friends to still come here and all that stuff to leave. So we want you here. We want you to still be here. We love you. We want you to keep coming and working your hard worker. You you bring clients in. You do all that stuff. But you're not gonna make any money. That's fucked up, right? I'm. Am I crazy for thinking that's fucked up? I don't care who they do this to. They could do this to. To the worst human on earth. I don't give a fuck. That's not fair. That's that's not right. That's not fucking American, <laughs> right? It, it's it, it's a disgusting thing to do to somebody all because somebody else complained. Like, oh yeah, a customer complained about you, and oh no, another server complained about you. So since they have kind of like a bigger following, so you're screwed. And I don't even think they have a bigger following. I think they have a minority following. I think Crowder is even bigger than them. But they just have less money because they're not backed up by a, by a huge media conglomerate. I don't even know that. I'll have to double check. I didn't go into their, their Twitter Twitter followings and stuff. And I started going through interviews. And, and, and if you want to get personal on this. Oh, okay. I'll, I forgot this. Before I forget, I, I tend to go on a tangent and on these things. Um, there, they, what they talked about merchandise. There's a shirt on Steven Crowder's site that has the face of Che Guevara. And it says, socialism is for figs. Now the A is they switched it out for a fig plant, and they're kind of just and Che Guevara is kind of like just tossing fig seeds. So it's a, it's socialism is for figs. That's the name of the shirt. That's what they're selling, and uh, so YouTube is saying that that is offensive merchandise. Now, to me, that's just very clearly a joke, right? And it's a jack. It's a it's actually a joke on several levels because. A, <laughs> Let, <laughs> Vox kind of tends to support socialism and uh, the funny thing is that Che Guevara was a horrible 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 human being who was an extreme racist <laughs> like, and I mean extreme racist and he kind of put gay people in concentration camps so he was not a nice guy and he did not like gay people and yet a, a lot of people wear his shirts for some reason th- this is one of the most horrible human beings in history like the dude was part of the Cuban Revolution because he liked killing people. Said by himself. That's exactly... Uh, I'm not That's. I'm not quoting him, and I think he said it in Spanish. But he just liked killing people. He was a very, very bad human being. But for some reason, he got romanticized, and then the shirt started becoming popular in the socialist movement. It was really weird. I, I would like to understand the psychology of all that. It never made any sense to me. But whatever. The point is, the shirt is clearly a joke. Right? I, I don't see how it's offensive. I don't see. I mean, I can see how you could get offended, but I think that's actually part of the joke. Because at first you see that like, oh, socialism, like, oh, what? I thought you were righty. What's happening? Like, and then you read, oh, socialism is for fig. What the fuck? And then, oh, okay, figs. All right. And that's the joke. That it's a. Uh, at first you think it's one thing. Oh, he's supporting socialism. And then you're like, oh, it's for fig. What? It. And they're like, oh, okay, for figs. All right. So it's that's it to me. If I saw somebody wearing that shirt, there's like it, he, it wants you to get different reactions, it, depending on which side you're on, I guess. But it's a joke. It's very clearly a joke, and it's made to look offensive, and that's part of the joke, right? I'm not crazy for this. If I'm crazy for this, let me know at Dario the Show on Instagram. Please let me know. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of all this because it still doesn't make any sense. So Crowder gets demonetized. Other people are getting demonetized, and. This is what happens when you fucking bitch and ruin things for everybody else. Because now it's getting ruined for everybody else. And honestly, it's going to get ruined for YouTube because you're opening. This is giving an opportunity for alternative platforms to open up that won't pull this on its creators. Because right now, you're biting the hand that feeds you. I know that YouTube, it's in a really comfortable position right now because huge media conglomerates, they're going to put all their stuff there. And uh, they can pay more and they're giving priority to all that stuff. But the creators, the little guys, the little guys who made YouTube happen are going to start leaving because they can't make money. If you can't make money there, you're going to leave. So the Twitches and Vimeos of the world need to take this opportunity and just be like, come with us. Come with us. We want to be the next YouTube because they're fucking idiots. They're shooting themselves in the foot. 
So, <laughs> I mean, think about it. Think of think of any of the channels that you watch. If one of them suddenly said, hey, well, I can't be on YouTube anymore because I'm not making any money. I got demonetized only because they think that I'm I'm being offensive or something. Just imagine a comedian. There's no way a fucking comedian it hasn't offended anybody. Part of part of the whole shtick is making fun of everybody. And so they do that and they're like, all right, I'm gonna leave. I'm just or you know what? In support of my other friend's channel who got who got blocked, who got banned, who I got uh, whatever, I'm leaving. And I'm going to over to Twitch. I'm switching over to Twitch. I'm switching over to Vimeo. You'd be like, okay, well, I'm gonna go there too. Cause that's where I watch the content that I like. You follow the people who you like. Honestly, you don't care about the big media conglomerates. You care about the people that you like. That's that's plain and simple. You, I, I think that's mo- what most people are online, at least from what I've understood. Because I've asked a few people about this. They'll be like, yeah, this is fucked up for YouTube. Because you're, you're screwing over the guys who got you there. And you don't realize what you're doing. And here's the, th- here's the kicker. You're also screwing up the big media guys. Because the big media guys aren't really that nice. And if you want to talk about breaking policies and harassment... The arguments from the other side are pretty, pretty good against you. And so let, let, let me give you an example, okay? So uh, <laughs> Stephen Colbert called Trump Putin's cock holster. Samantha B called Ivanka Trump a feckless cunt, okay? That is content that it's okay to put on YouTube, and it's not harassment. It's not harassment against the Trumps, even though... <laughs> <laughs> it's not harassment. Okay, doing that is cool. So, I don't the the thing that I don't like here is the double standard. I'm okay with the jokes. The jokes are fine. You can call anybody a cock holster if you want. That's fine. I don't care who you're insulting. Insults are usually funny. They but I have a really thick skin. I can tell you the the things that people have told me. They just roll off my back and I find it funny. And actually, if somebody uses a good enough insult against me, I'll probably like that guy cuz I'll be like, "Man, that motherfucker was clever." Son of a bitch. <laughs> and I, I appreciate Clever. So it, it's the ones that just give you all the basic insults. Like, oh, you're fucking wetback, stupid son of a bitch. I hate you. It's like, well, you're boring. Be creative. Give me something creative and I'll appreciate you. I'll appreciate the genius of your meanness. Because, I, 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 again, I have a really fucked up sense of humor. I think it's funny when people make fun of other people. I I love it. I like seeing people get sad. It. I enjoy it. It's funny for me. But again, I, I acknowledge that I have a fucked up sense of humor. And I think I, I, I follow my policies in comedy are the South Park guidelines of comedy. If you can't make fun of everybody, that means that you can't make fun of anybody. And so far right now, it seems like they only want to t- uh, target the people they don't like. Now, who is the people they don't like? Doesn't matter. Because guess what? Tomorrow that might change. And the next day, that might change again because policies or the problem is that the policy is too vague. OK, Let, let's stick to that. The policy is too vague and it basically means whoever I don't like. And that's not a good policy. The, if the policy is very specific in, OK, if you do this, if you use this word, if you do this, then OK, then I can follow those rules because I know the rules. Give me the fucking rules and I'll follow them. It's pretty clear. Or I'll leave. If, if you say you can't use the letter E, then I'll be like, fuck that. I'm, I can't just censor every single word I say just to omit the letter E. See, right now it'd be eliminated. See, oh, eliminated. God, son of a bitch. So you can't just make up rules on the fly. You need to tell people what they are. And then from that point forward, that's what's going to be applied. You can't punish them for something they did in the past that wasn't wrong. That's fucked up. And again, uh, again, just do this yourself a favor. Eliminate your feelings towards one side or the other. This policy is horseshit. What they're doing is bullshit. It's not just. Okay, I was going to say it's not fair, but no, fairness has nothing to do with it. And I have a a, pers- a a particular way of thinking between... There's a difference between fair and just, and it's not just. I don't care if things are fair. I care if things are just. I think that's the difference between an immature person and an immature person. An immature person wants fairness. A mature person wants justice, okay? Because we, you should be able to know the difference. Anyway, so what they're doing, YouTube right now, they're shooting themselves in the fo- foot. They're fighting the, the they're attacking the people that created them there, and they're creating a void in the market, which, honestly, that's the beauty of of the free market. <laughs> that that there's, if you, if you fuck, 
people over this way, there will be something else that pops up and they will take over. And honestly, it's just going to hurt your wallet. But I don't like this trend that's happening with big social media companies that, oh, yeah, the heckler's veto works. Because right now, you, right now, the people who complain, they're empowered, right? They're like, you see, we got this done. And it wasn't a full victory because they only got him demonetized. It's still a victory. Don't get me wrong. And there's a threat that, that, he, that he'll be eliminated from YouTube completely. He'll be banned. But that was a victory, all right? They, they got their heckler's veto. And so right now, what you said is, if you complain loudly enough, if you complain hard enough, then we'll, we'll bend to your will. You own us. We'll, we'll follow you. And here's the thing. The activist groups are 1% of their audience. 1%, right? Maybe even less. They're a really loud minority. Really loud minority. Most of us do not give a fuck. If there's a channel of a guy calling somebody a lispy queer, you just be like, oh, well, that's not my type of comedy. I don't care. I just won't listen to it. We won't care. Honestly, that's the beauty of of mature adults. We don't care. It it doesn't affect me at all. I know that there's there's somebody out there making fun of me right now. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'll just ignore you. It's called being a fucking adult. Just ignore them. But if your response is you're trying to actively oppress people you don't like, that is called fascism. And that is scary for me. Because if you want to start censoring the internet, social media, then honestly, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. <laughs> well, well, the problem is that if it becomes uh, actual policy, governmental policy, right now, not that big of a deal because like I said, if one... All right. Okay, I, I'm going to try to follow this train of thought logically. So there is a social media company that's censoring the people that don't like. And I'm right now I'm going to assume that it's a left-leaning a left-leaning site and it's censoring all the people from the right. Well, the obvious response to that is that another social media conglomerate is going to open up that's supportive to the right and everybody's going to be completely divided. All right? So righties are going to go to the right, lefties are going to go to the left, and the country's going to get more and more divided, right? Not really, because eventually, hopefully, somebody with some balls and some brains is going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to open up a social media site that is open for everybody. And so they'll get people from the right, they'll get people from the left, and they're going to end up getting more because let's say it's almost a 50-50 split between conservatives and liberals in the U.S., almost 50-50, and most of us get along, okay? I don't care if you're conservative, I don't care if you're liberal, most of us get along. We disagree on minor things, but most of us get along or we don't care enough to fight. It's like, um, I don't know, if you disagree with me on climate change, it's not like I'm going to get in a fist fight with you. I'll, we might talk about it because I appreciate talking to people and I learn. That's The only way you can learn, the only way you can see the other side of an argument is by talking to somebody on the other side. That's that's how you get a 360 picture of it and then you can decide, well, this angle is just better. It makes more sense, right? So I'm on one side on one thing. I'm on one side on the other. I usually try to be on the side that I consider to be the smartest or the one that has the best argument because otherwise I hate being on the side that you that makes you look like an idiot. I hate it. <laughs> I hate that you're on the side where you don't really have any data, where you don't have any good arguments to defend yourself because then you look like an idiot. And I'm already good enough at making myself look like an idiot. I don't need anybody's help. So what I think this will happen is that eventually YouTube is going to lose a lot of a lot of its market. Vimeo, Twitch, and other things like that are going to grow. And if they start re- leaning to the right, somebody eventually is going to start leaning to the middle, and that's going to take the majority of the market. It's going to blow up really quickly. So if you're looking to invest in stuff, I'd keep an eye out on on the new social media sites that are popping up and the one that's in the middle, I'd invest in it because I think you're going to make a lot of money because I think the majority of the American public is sick and tired of all this bullshit. Honestly, th- this is the bad thing about elections. I find politics super interesting, but I'm sick and tired of all the bullshit that comes with it, okay? And I'm also tired of reporters being activists. You are a reporter. You're a journalist. Your job is to report stuff. You're not supposed to be a fucking activist. And right now you are actively, well, you're, you're, you're asking for censorship. A reporter is asking for censorship. That's 
insanity. You're asking for them to to censor somebody else. And it's not even because they're telling lies or anything. They're just being mean. Are you fucking kidding me? So, again, YouTube is a private company. They can do whatever they want. It's fine. It's their right. It's their God-given right as an American company or whatever. I don't even know if... I, do they have... Uh, the point is they can do whatever they want. It's their own, it's their own private company. But if they start turning this policy into... They, they started to promote this policy into actual governmental policy... That's when we're having issues because it doesn't matter if there's another company that pops up afterwards then because they're going to be as long as the censorship does not come from the top. OK, I, I'm, I got there. Whew, that took me a minute. The problem is then when the if the policy is coming from the company, it's fine. The company can do, can do whatever it wants. But if the policy is coming from the top, a.k.a. the government, you're screwed. We're screwed. That's that's violating the First Amendment. But if there was already enough support and and what's it called? There's a legal term for this. President, then that makes it easier for them to implement it. And that's really fucked up. Because guess what? A president or, a, okay, president and Congress and the Senate don't aren't always controlled by the same people. They tend to change. You remember the last president leaned one side. The president before that leaned to the other side. The president before that leaned to the other side. The president before that leaned to the other side. So... If you're in the fa- in favor of something that screws somebody else just because you don't like them, guess what? Things tend to come around, and if you create this big-ass gun, this big-ass censorship gun, just because, ha, screw that guy, I don't like him, guess what? Eventually, that gun will be turned around on you, because power doesn't always stay in the same hands. That's That's the beauty of the U.S., okay? That's why it's probably the most balanced country in the world because power has been able to change from one side to the other and right and if it happens when your guy's in power cool you're like great this is great my guy is doing this if it happens when the person you like we well, the person you hate is in power then you're going to be complaining non-stop and you're going to realize oh fuck we created a fucking monster so Closing thoughts, and I went on a really long rant on this one. I didn't even want to get into it too deep, but there's a lot. Like I said, this is a big deal. This is a big, big deal. Closing thoughts. Don't censor people, all right? First off, don't censor people. Two, stop being such a little bitch. Three, um, don't screw over the people who got you there. And I felt this, I remember, I made this argument when, when Disney fired James Gunn over something that he apologized for over a decade ago. I was like, you fucking unfaithful bastards. I wasn't going to see the next Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was considering not watching another Marvel movie because of it. James, by the way, for those of you who don't know, James Gunn was the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, Disney fired them because he made a lot of really, really nasty and appropriate jokes like 10 years ago uh, He on Twitter, and he talked about it a few years ago, and he asked for an apology. He was like, oh, yeah, I was trying to be provocative. I learned, and so I changed. People are allowed to learn. People are allowed to change. I change my mind all the time just because I learn more information. Information changes you. Experience change, changes you. So I believe that people can change. Otherwise, nobody would ever trust uh, any former alcoholics or addicts ever. But anyway, so it th- this guy apologized. And then, because people complained, like, look at what James Gunn wrote 10 years ago. Disney were like, oh, well, fuck it. People are complaining. Let's fire him. And so they fired James Gunn. And I remember I said, I'm not going to watch the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie unless it's directed by James Gunn. I may not even watch any of the other Marvel movies because this is fucking horseshit. This is bullshit. This guy made you over a billion dollars, okay? Nobody expected anything from the Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody even knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were. And he created a giant franchise, one of their most successful franchises. He crea- he made stars out of that cast. It was all the script. I mean, it was a combination of things, but he's the guy that made it happen. He wrote the script. He directed the movie. He made you over a billion dollars, and you're going to fire him over things he said and apologized for that you should have known when you hired him. So you hired him knowing that he said these things because he publicly apologized for it on his own. Nobody was forcing him to do it. He did it on his own. And you were f- and you're firing him now just because somebody complained? Are you fucking kidding me? Now, 
Afterwards, Disney changed their mind because the cast complained. Everybody complained. They thought they saw that it was unfair, and they rehired Gunn. And it's good uh, kudos on you. You did not let the terrorist win. That's my issue. You can't let the terrorist win. And that's what they were doing. You were letting the terrorist win. And right now, YouTube, you're letting the terrorists win. You can't let them. Just because somebody complains and cries and like, oh, you hurt my feelings, doesn't mean they're right. People need to understand, okay? You are not right just because you're complaining. You are not right just because your feelings got hurt. What's the phrase? Facts don't care about your feelings, okay? It's what you do, what you act. If you don't do anything that's wrong, then they should not be able to just because you got offended. Now, for example, if if you put a policy that says you cannot insult anybody, then, okay, policy was broken You from now on because you can't retroactively do it. But, all right, from now on, I won't insult anybody, okay? Like, if, if my boss walked in here and said, Dario, if you use the word and one more time, you'll get fired. From now on, you'll get fired for using the word and because it's racist and homophobic. And, and I keep using it. Shit. Okay. Bad example. But the point is, all right, if they said that, I'd be like, okay, I quit. Because there's no way, <laughs> there's no way that I won't be able to use the word and. Okay. <laughs> that, that That's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous rule. And it's a ridiculous example. The point is, I have the choice from then on. You can't just, it, it, it's very different than if Eddie walks in here, my boss, and says, Dario. If you use the word and, you're fired. And since I've heard you say the word and before, you're fired. So I'd be like, Eddie, you just used the word and. And he'd be like, it doesn't matter when I use it. It's only when you use it. You're not allowed. And you have in the past. So you're fired. Or actually, you know what? You're not fired. You still have to come here and work. But we won't pay you. Be like, what the fuck, man? That's that's bullshit, right? That would be bullshit. So, again, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. This is disgusting. This is bad. And this will dramatically change the landscape of social media. I'm hoping for the better because there's always there's always economic consequences for this type of thing. Like, for example, (laughs) and I found this hysterical uh, sign ups for Steven Crowder's mug club went up. (laughs) People start more people started joining mug club. And so what happens when people join mug club? Which, by the way, it's, it's a ridiculous fucking name. But when people join Muck Club, uh, that means that they can get all of Steven Crowder's content on Muck Club. So they won't go through YouTube. Which means that YouTube is losing money and Steven Crowder is directly gaining money. So, <laughs> these things have a way of balancing themselves out. The market, The market will always dictate who's right and who's wrong. Okay, Don't listen to the people who cry the loudest. The people who cry the loudest are not the market. Listen to the market. The market will tell you, and the market usually doesn't care unless you do something that they consider to be bullshit, and this is bullshit. Most of us are objective human beings, and we can we can see bullshit, all right? We can smell bullshit. We can, we can tell when something is just pure and total horseshit, right? I think we can. I think that's fair. So you did something that you think was wrong. There will be consequences for it. And those three million followers that he had on your channel it's it's millions of it's hundreds of millions of views they've had so they've had hundreds of millions of views via via this guy and they're still going to keep the money for it they're not going to give it back they're going to be like oh no these words if you know what i'd have a little bit more respect if youtube said you know what we're going to donate all the money that we've made via his channel to charity because what he said was hateful and we don't want any hateful money i'd respect them a little bit more i'd be like okay I, I don't agree, but I respect you for it. I respect your principles. That's that's commitment. But they're not going to do that. They're not doing that. They're going to keep the money. They're just kowtowing to the whiny losers. And I'm going to call them losers. Well, well, right now they won. To the whiners, right? The whiny terrorists. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's it's annoying, but it is what it is. What can you do? Hopefully, Hopefully this takes a turn. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired. No, I, I heard it the other day on the Joe Rogan. I, I know that I was supposed to be ending it, but I, there's too much to say. And apparently I'm in the middle of this this business and I kind of have, have to state my side. So I heard this on the Joe Rogan podcast the other day that apparently people, activists, SJWs, are so that's social justice warriors, are camping out. Well, not camping out, but they're going to comedy clubs to heckle at comedians, to boo them. So 
there this is an attack on comedy, okay? They're just going there to try to shut you up. To if you say something that was mean, or that they could, okay. It doesn't matter that you said something that was mean. It says some it matters that, that you said something they didn't like. So if you are a righty, all right, and you make fun of Obama, it's cool. But if you make fun of Trump, then you're a whole you're an a hole. On the other hand, if you're a lefty and you make fun of Trump, then you're great. You're fantastic. You're hysterical. If you make fun of Obama, then you're a disgusting bigot racist. This is <laughs> you can't have it both ways, okay? You need to be objective. You need to be a grown up. And trying to censor comedy this way, mo- okay? Most of these comics that go to the comedy store, I've gotten to know quite a few of them. I, I have, I don't have like crazy conversations, but I have brief conversations here because on the station on Fridays we have a thing called Free Comedy Friday, and comedians who are coming into town, they stop by, they talk for a few minutes, and then they leave to promote their shows. So I've gotten to talk to them and I get their opinions on certain things. And this thing has popped up. And a lot of them, most of these guys, well, the, the guys who come in are usually headliners, but sometimes they're accompanied by smaller guys. And so their stories are very interesting because these dudes are struggling. And I mean struggling. They're just trying to make it. It's not easy to make it in comedy at all. It's very subjective. And if you end, it all depends on where you're standing. So you might have an amazing set in Atlanta that totally bombs in Texas. And you might have an amazing set in San Francisco that totally bombs in Los Angeles. That's not really even that far. So it's very, it's a difficult industry. It's a cutthroat industry. It's really difficult. And a lot of these people are really struggling. So imagine you're going on stage. You have, you barely have any money. Listen to any, any comedian story. Well, not any, but most comedian stories, they, they struggled. They, they went hungry. I remember Tony Hinchcliffe talks about this a lot when he, when he joined our show a couple of times and he, he had to share a studio apartment with three other adults. Four, I think. And one of them was a couple. And he was like, dude, I just I did whatever I could to make money. And I, I try to make it. And, and he worked hard. And he was good at his comedy. He worked at his craft. And he made it. But you are, you are an a-hole if you go and you try to ruin somebody's set who's just trying to make it. Who's just trying to make ends meet. Who just found something funny. And the thing is that you didn't like what he said. Because you, that's not your type of comedy. If, the, if somebody says that's not your it's something that you don't ap- approve of on on stage, you just ignore it. You don't laugh, and you're like, okay, well, I don't like that person. All right, that's it. It's it's disgusting to me. It's disgusting that people are camping out at comedy clubs just to try to silence voices they don't like. And again, this goes back to the power of comedy. Comedy has a lot of power in it, and they know it. And they're trying to screw with it, which goes back to the oppression of the other side, which goes back to fascism. It's wrong on all sides. Either either you think it's wrong or it's not. And if you think it's wrong, then it, it, it should be wrong for all sides. Okay? I don't care. I don't I I, I don't care what side you're on. It's it's wrong on all sides. It should be cr- pretty clear. So just to end it, because I <laughs> I want. I didn't want to make this this long. It's fifty something minutes. Fuck. I only wanted to talk about it for a few. Just state the facts and leave. But I got. I got too heated. So in closing, I uh, I go back to I am from the school of South Park. If you can't make fun of everything, you can't make fun of every, anything. That's it. That's where I stand. That's that's where I stand. You can make fun of everything. attack me if you want at Diary of the Show on Instagram. I love. Actually, I love it. I, I've gotten into a few arguments with people online. I love it. I get. I get some really fucked up satisfaction from it. So, I don't know. Just just be cool. Why can't we just be cool? Just why can't we just be like I don't like you, but I respect your right to say what you what you got to say. I won't follow you. I won't do anything. You can say that over there. I don't care. I don't I don't understand it and I don't like it. And but okay, I, I was about to get into another rant <laughs> cuz I remembered something that a psychologist said. You know, I'll just get into this Right here, because I don't want to. I don't want to touch the such a subject again, because it's giving me a migraine. So, a psychologist once said, then he was trying to defend, and it, the, this was social psychologist, and he was trying to defend the reason why you should defend, uh, why why you should not ban people who, let's say, promote hate speech. Right? Why should you like? There's there's an alt right voice, a white supremacist. Why you shouldn't block them from, from why you shouldn't ban them from social media and all that stuff? Because it was big news back in in a, a, a while ago. So, 
uh, somebody got blocked. And he said, no, you should not block these people from social media. You should ha- allow them to have their channels because these are people who are, let's say, sick or whatever, or they're wrong in the head, or they have evil ideals. And so you want to keep them in the light. You want to know where they are. If you block them here, which is mainstream, they'll go into the deep web. They'll go to the darker places of the internet, and then you can't control what they say. You have no idea what they're being said, and they're going to start spreading their ideas to people who are vulnerable to be infected by bad ideas. If you keep them in the light, then they can be good people can comment on their stuff and be like, yeah, this is wrong because of this, this, and this. And there's always going to be trolls. There's always going to be trolls online. I'm, I I find trolls funny sometimes. Sometimes what they do is kind of fucked up. It all depends on what they do. I, I don't mind. People who just say things, I don't mind because it's just words. Words don't hurt you. And if you're weak enough, the words hurt you, then you're a little bitch. Anyway, and so I that to me, that seems totally reasonable. If somebody has a channel who what, where all he does is just, let's say, defend what's really bad. Nazis. Somebody who all day, he just all every video is just trying to defend Nazis, and you start seeing people like comment. They're like, "Oh, okay. Well, guess what? You guess what you learned? You learned who the Nazis are. You know what they think. You know what they're trying to do. What they're trying to promote. And you can ignore it. You can just be like, "All right, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's not my cup of tea. I don't like Nazis." Or you can reach out to the people there and be like, "Dude, this is kind of like a bad mentality. Or, or this is a." misreading of history this is wrong this is wrong you can have a debate you can have a conversation if you let people just hide and and uh, what you call the cluster themselves together and block themselves out from all the other ideas that's when that's when the sickness starts you want them you want people to mix okay good ideas and bad ideas because eventually the good idea will beat out the bad one and they'll be able to see it in human interaction it's inevitable you 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 can't avoid this stuff Good ideas spread like wildfire. Bad ideas make you look like idiots. And nobody wants to look like an idiot for too long. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes to be made fun of. But the only way that that's going to happen is if you keep them in the limelight. And to me, that made perfect sense. It was a perfectly reasonable argument. And that's the best reason why I would never suggest anybody get banned for something unless they're doing something criminal. And if they do something criminal, my suggestion is not banning them. My suggestion is then arresting them. Like, for example, if it's illegal to say, um, I don't like this person, go out and hurt them, okay? Like, if I call for, for, somebody's, for somebody else to go hurt somebody, then I'm responsible because I'm calling to action. If I just say, this person's an idiot and I hate them, then it's fine. If I say, this person's an idiot, I don't like him, somebody should kill him, then that's dicey territory, okay? Then you might be legally responsible for it. And... Ah, uh, guess what? If I get arrested, it's because I was an idiot. Because bad ideas are bad ideas. Or if you dox somebody, which again means give out their personal information, then you might be legally liable for it because if something happens to that person, well, then it's kind of through direct action of yours. So, like I said, this is a big, big, big messy subject, but it is an important one. And I don't want to get into it again. I think... Well, you know what? I will, unfortunately, because it's got my attention now. Before it didn't have my attention, now it's got my attention, and I'm going to follow through with it, but but I won't do any other rants. I'll just state the facts, unless you want me to. Let me know what you think. Honestly, I want to know what your take on this is, because it seems important, honestly. It seems like an, like an important change, and it's a, like social media is re- it's reaching uh, a crossing point, you know? It's, it's a, reaching a fork in the road. Which road do you think it should take? Are you okay with the censorship? Because you think that some people shouldn't have a voice just because you don't like it. Are you against it? Are are you just don't give a fuck? Honestly, I didn't really give a fuck that much until I started researching all that stuff for this. But okay, that's it. I promise this one, this is it. I gotta go to beer fest. I need a beer. I need a beer. I've never needed a beer so bad. Hopefully this was entertaining for you. (laughs) And uh, hopefully you have a great weekend. On Monday, I will go back to my regular scheduled programming. Uh... (laughs) I will go back to my rewriting of Game of Thrones. I only set up the North on Monday, so I'm going to set up the rest of the Seven Kingdoms, or as much as I can. I'm I'm going on too many rants. I know it. I'm, but people keep asking me. The problem is that people keep asking me. Well, it's not a problem. I think it's what people want, and I'll just give you what you want. And honestly, I don't mind. I I keep getting deeper and deeper into things. I keep chewing more on the bone because people are like, yeah, we enjoy it. 
just keep doing it. Do it more. And I'm like, but I lose my shit. I lose my shit. I lose my train of thought. I'm, I know I'm kind of a crazy person. <laughs> I was trying to do this in a professional, organized manner. But <laughs> I got to give the people what they want, man. So <laughs> give me your thoughts on that. Uh, as always, thank you for listening. And I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend.